All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the beginning of unit five. We got five lessons coming through here. This is actually going to connect straight through chapter four of our textbook, but we're gonna call it unit five just to follow our theme. Uh, you'll notice that we have, like I said, five lessons here. The first three are gonna be somewhat easy and the following two, the last two are gonna be our two challenging lessons for this particular unit. So let's go ahead and look at Lesson one, we're looking at extreme values of functions, and we're going to be looking at how to find those extreme values using calculus. Uh, some of it we've done already. Much of what we're going to hear today is stuff we've done before in either pre-calculus or algebra two. Um, we've even done it a little bit already in the calculus. So we're going to first of all look at definitions and then look at what that means as we go into the calculus itself. So. First of all, if you have a function f with domain of d, then f of c, so some y value, is called the absolute maximum if that y value is bigger than all other y values on the entire function. And that we should know all that already. And likewise, it goes the same way with minimum. It's the absolute minimum if that y value is smaller than all other y values on the function. I think you'll see where this is going as we continue. So let's get these definitions out of the way. Let's go on to our next statement. So the first theorem that we're going to look at in this particular unit is the extreme value theorem. This is if you have a continuous function on a closed interval. Be paying attention to the closed interval then you are guaranteed both a maximum and a minimum value on that interval. You're guaranteed. And that kind of makes sense if you have a minimum value or a closed interval. That means you could have some sort of line that looks like this where it shows on this line that the minimum and the maximum are the endpoints. Or, if you were to do something like this, then the absolute maximum occurs at the right endpoint, but the minimum occurs at some other spot. But it, if you have a closed interval, you are guaranteed a maximum value and a minimum value on that interval. So to go along with the absolute maximums, you also have, or we have these things called local extremes. Um, if you are, if you have a point on the interior of the domain, then f of c is a local maximum if that y value is larger than all of the close by y values. And we understand this, um, I believe, from our pre-calculus lessons where this right here would be a local minimum. This would be a local maximum because everything close by is smaller. This would be a local minimum, but we'd actually call this absolute because it's the lowest point on the entire function. And likewise, we have the idea of a local minimum value where that y value is smaller than all the nearby y values. Now, what's nice that goes along with these things is calculus can help us find extreme values. So if you have a function, and a function f has a local maximum value or local minimum value, then, oh, and on that point c, and if the derivative exists, that's very important, if the derivative exists, then f prime of c is equal to zero. And we know this already. We've looked at this previous in previous lessons. If you were to get some function like this and you went to some c value and found f of c, the slope of the tangent line is zero at that maximum point. We've looked at this little by little as we've gone through our derivatives. Usually in previous lessons, this was asked in such a way that said, find the point C that makes the derivative 
parallel to the x-axis. Well, that just means find the slope of zero. And that actually created a maximum or a minimum value depending on what the graph looked like. And we're going to use this to our advantage. Now, there's some things we have to remember. We have to remember the idea of derivative equal to zero. We have to remember the idea of endpoints, as mentioned previously. And we have to understand the idea of a critical point. A critical point is a point on the interior of the domain for which the derivative is zero or the derivative not, does not exist. Those are our possible critical points. So if we looked at an example here, I want to find the extreme values. I want to find the absolute max and the absolute min, essentially. I'm looking for the extreme values of the function f of x. So first of all, I need to find the derivative. Because I need to know, is there any point at which the derivative is 0 or undefined? If I took the derivative, I would get 2 thirds times x to the negative 1 third, which is equal to 2 over 3 times the cube root of x. Now, we know that there's nothing that makes this 0. However, at f prime of 0, this is a d and e. This is a does not exist. This is an undefined value. That means our critical points could happen at x equals 0. It could happen at my end point, And it could happen my, my other end points. So these are possibilities. So critical point possibilities are 0 because that's where the derivative is undefined. Negative 2 and negative 3 because that's the end points on my interval. So I need to test f of 0. Well, I know f of 0 is 0 to the 2 thirds. It's just going to be 0. I know f of negative 2. f of negative 2 is going to be negative 2 to the 2 thirds. Thirds. Well, I can square negative 2 to become 4, and I get the cube root of 4. And then if I did f of 3, I do the same thing. I get 3 squared, which is 9, and I get the cube root of 9. Now, in order to determine which one's the minimum and which one's the maximum, we just look to see which one is the biggest and which one is the smallest. I know the cube root of 9 is bigger than the cube root of 4, and 0 is smaller than both of them. So this point here is my absolute minimum at x equals 0, and my absolute max at x equals 3. And notice that that maximum occurred at the end point. This comes in every once in a while. It comes in on an AP test question where it asks to find the extreme value. And you must, and it's usually on a um, free response question, where you must show that you tried the critical point of the D and E or the 0. And you must have tried the endpoints. So let's look at a slightly different example here. If I gave you g of x, and I want to find the extreme values. Notice um, it doesn't give you an interval. It doesn't give you an interval at all. And that's kind of in the fact that I mean, you have to think about the domain. The domain of f of x was all real numbers. So we were looking at a very small portion of the domain. This function right here is actually 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Well, that means that x, the domain of x, or sorry, the domain of g is from negative 2 to 2 non-inclusive. So in this particular case, we don't have any endpoints to try. So what we need to do is we find, find the derivative. And the derivative here is negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x, times 4 minus x squared 
Subtract 1 on the exponent gets negative 3 halves. The negatives cancel, the 2's cancel, and I get a function that looks like this. x over the, <coughs> excuse me, the square root of 4 minus x squared cubed. However you want to put the cube in there. Now, that means my critical point can occur when x equals 0. It can occur at 2. Or no, it can't because the domain is has to be greater than or equal, or sorry, greater than 2 or less than 2. So that means I can't even use 2 in this particular case because the domain is negative 2 and 2. And if we were to plug in x equals 0 into the original function, we would get g of 0 is 1 over the square root of 4, which is 1 half. And so therefore, we would get 1 half as the maximum or the extreme value at x equals 0. And you can figure out analytically, kind of using numbers on your cat on your um, paper, if you went to the right of zero and to the left of zero, you could determine whether or not that was a maximum or a minimum. And in this particular case, it's a minimum. So we have a minimum, and you can do it graphically as well. We have a minimum at x equals zero and y equals positive one half. Alright, oh looky there, the lesson is already done. Because you don't have the assignment sheet just yet, here is your assignment. There's no worksheets to go along with this particular lesson, and I don't think I've found any yet that go along with the entire unit, but we'll see as we continue on and as I dive, dive see, deeper into the worksheets. So here you guys go. Hope you guys learned a little bit today, and I will see you guys tomorrow.